<laughs> so before we go to Bugenhagen, we need to actually get the huge materia from that submarine. Because what happens is you... You murder that submarine and doom its entire- Oh, there's Emerald Weapon just hanging out. <laughs> Shit. You guys wanna fuck? No! <laughs> is you you murder that submarine and doom its crew to one of the most horrific deaths a human being can possibly imagine. Just being trapped underwater. Just being trapped and... underwater with no hope of rescue. Yeah, um, that's it's fucked up. Horrifying, yeah. Uh, that's why Lovecraft wrote a story about being trapped in a submarine at the bottom of the ocean. But uh, you, you you don't even get the uh, you don't even get the huge materia when you first come here, or when you first kill it. You immediately go topside. Then you have to specifically come back here to get it. No damage has been... Oh, good, good thing that material yeah, is good fine. good thing the material is fine. Meanwhile, all these sailors are banging on the hole. Oh, there's Emerald Weapon again! Hey guys, nope. still down Soil! Point. Sure you don't want to take me up on that offer? And now we can go see Beavenhagen. Be like, hey, bruh. Alright, let's see. TelltheBell.com <laughs> Kurt is taking a Taco Bell survey from the Delicious Taco Bell, by the way. Today's episode of CDP Plays is brought to you by Taco Bell. Live Moss! Um, but he's taken the survey because the cashier who handed us the survey slips seemed very distraught, as though her her continued employment is dependent upon good reviews on these surveys. She wrote her name on it and everything, and then she made extra special to, like, take extra special care to make sure that we were, like, she was spelling our names right. Yeah. Which is always crazy to me. I understand there are some different spellings of Kurt. But they don't even they write don't... your name down. <laughs> it's not Starbucks. They didn't even call my name out when they uh, gave me my yeah, order. Yeah, I just, noticed that. They just said, box. Yeah. Who ordered the box of food? <laughs> Who ordered food box? Although one time I did go to a Starbucks and the woman wrote my name on the cup so poorly that the... Uh, other woman, the one who had to actually say what was written down, said, R Rihanna? Yep. Yeah, Rihanna's here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a 16 digit code for the survey. Okay. Oh, God. Because people want to do that. You already made them save the receipt, yeah. uh, which I'm surprised that I did. <laughs> so everyone's real, everyone's real downtrodden, and no one quite knows why. The, the end of the world is only one part of it. So Bugenhagen came to call everyone in here for a big ol... Stop being bummed out, you bummers. Just a big ol' powwow. You big dumb yeah. bummers, quit bumming out. Yeah. Because, like, well, they're supposed to be the heroes, but they're all bummed. They're bummed right the fuck out. Alright, let's see. Rate your overall satisfaction with your experience of this Taco Bell. From highly satisfied to highly dissatisfied. I was satisfied. I was satisfied. Yeah. And so in the same way that Cloud overcame his earlier um, cloudiness ha -ha, and doubt in himself, everyone in the party is overcoming their own doubts and sadnesses because they're all being held back somewhat by the, the fact of Eris' death. Because everyone's like, oh, Eris was the only hope for the world, and now that she's gone, what can we possibly do? Yeah. But then Bukenhagen's like, nah, fuck that. You guys quit fucking being such big ass goddamn bummers. Yeah. Sid's just like, he's like still basking in the afterglow of fucking space back there. He's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, he's he's always smoking, so he's got a foot up in that direction. But I hate these surveys when you say you're just satisfied instead of highly satisfied. So, earlier in the survey you said you were satisfied oh, yeah, overall. Yeah. Please tell us why you were not highly satisfied. I don't know, because it's fucking Taco Bell? That's exactly what I'm going to write. <laughs> it's fucking Taco Bell. I don't know. Look, there's only so much service you can do for me at Taco Bell, okay? No, I don't think it's fair. But that's the reality of it being Taco Bell. We should finish this playthrough just in time for dinner, too. It's perfect. Oh, man. I don't know. Apostrophe, cuz. <laughs> it's fucking apostrophe Taco Bell. Question mark. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> may we post your feedback and the date of your visit online sure. for us to read? Yes, you may. <laughs> 
Please provide a screen name. Yeah. Oh man, hopefully. So in the in the very 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 off chance that someone watching this doesn't know what the huge materia do, these allow you to circumvent all the limitations of the materia system. Basically, the blue one's only use is if you have the Bahamut and Neo Bahamut materia, it will give you Bahamut Zero, which is the most powerful of the three Bahamut summons. The other ones allow you to acquire Master Materia of their corresponding color. So once you've mastered all green magic materia, you can combine them all into a single piece of Master Materia, which contains every magic spell. Fuck. It doesn't have any... It doesn't increase any of your stats the way Materia does. It doesn't decrease any of them either. It takes up a single slot. All of them will be affected by anything in the... If it's... If it's junctioned with another materia, like let's say all, they will all have the benefit of that materia. Jeez. Um, the summon materia does the same thing. All summons in a single materia. The the master summon. Uh, the the command one's a bit odd because it's not every yellow command materia, but it's most of them. Mm -hmm. So again, you can have someone with everything except for I think I want to say I want to say it doesn't have uh, four times attack. And it doesn't have enemy skill, but it has everything else. So you can have manipulate, steal. Um, God, I use so, I use so few of the actual uh, command materia that I don't even remember most of them. But basically, that allows you to circumvent the materia system completely because you can have everything on one character, even That's though you crazy. can only have at most 16 materia slots. That's crazy. Look at Loud's face. Yeah, I don't know. Duh. I don't know. <laughs> But here's, here's... It's all derpy to the side. <laughs> it looks like, like a big, dumb, white smile. Like, and then the yeah. eyes are just like... <laughs> <laughs> I like this moment, though, because Cloud's actually opening up to people now. That's cool. Right? Before, he was always standoffish. He was always like, oh, I'm just... I'm here for the money. Or we gotta do the mission or whatever. Yeah. But here, Yuffie is like... Oh fuck! I feel motion sick, and he's like, "Oh, I know. I oh god, I know. I used to deal with that all the time. I did find ways to yeah handle it though." And he gives her a little bit of advice. <laughs> he just leans in really quick. He's like, "Don't eat," and then it, like, <laughs> it cuts out, and he's like, "Way unhealthy looking." Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Emerald weapon is just always here. Look at this. Did a manager slash team member encourage you to provide high ratings on the survey? Just like get Lori in super big trouble? <laughs> yes, and her name was Lori. She said if we didn't give her high ratings, that she would spit in our tacos. And well, I don't want to eat spit tacos. <laughs> it occurred to me that she wouldn't be able to uh, know if we had rated her until after we'd been done and had our tacos in hand, but whatever. So. There, there's one key item that you need the submarine in order to acquire. There's a few other things you can do with the sub. The only thing you need to get with the sub is a key to an upcoming area. As I've said before, I know, I know every step to this game's critical path, and so I don't actually know what the breadcrumbing is like. So I don't know how infuriating this section might be to a new player, because I never... I never experienced this as a new player. I feel like I first saw a DJ or someone mm. do this. And then when I got to this point in my own game, then I just knew, okay, you come all the way down here and you get this dumb key. Because we're going to go back yeah. to the City of the Ancients where Eris died, but we need to activate this particular mechanism. But in order to do that, we need this key. And so I imagine that if you go there without the key, Buchenhagen is like, huh, looks like something would fit here. I think I heard about something under the under the ocean, and then you would just drift around in your sub forever until you found this. Probably describes like what a continent, and, and you have to like look yeah. at the map and. Yeah, there, there there's must be a hint somewhere. There's one other thing we're going to do. It's not necessary, but it is. It it is fun for story purposes because now that you have a sub, you can do this with uh, a chocobo as well. But with a sub. You can come up to this w weird little crater, this crater lake, hmm. and then uh, put Vincent on your party and head into that uh, waterfall. Hedge Lord. Yeah, Hedge Lord. Which I wish the game had more hidden areas like this in the overworld yeah, to explore. I, I really like shit like this yeah. a lot, like a whole that you never need to see. Like the you can get up here with a chocobo. Um, but if you did that, you might not think that even think there's anything here. You might think it's just a nice little 
piece of scenery. Sword. Yeah. Um, but the submarine, you have to find this really hidden like culvert, this under or this underground cavern, and then follow that for a while, and it takes you to the middle of this continent, and it's like, well, there must be something here, or else it wouldn't take me all the way yeah. here. So it's actually more interesting if you come by a sub, because it feels more impactful. Aw, young, young Edge Lord. Aww. When he wore a suit. Just a suit. I got the uh, voice line of uh, Reaper where he's like, I'm not a psychopath. I'm a high functioning psychopath. I'm like, God oh, damn it. He says that? Yeah. Oh my God, it's, that's perfect. It's so like. Uh, like, Reaper is just so good at being that character. It's so funny. It's so funny. And I see people wearing the Reaper shirts where it's just his helmet. So, this whole story bit is very, well, I don't know if it's very important, but it does add another layer to the tale of Sephiroth and his conception. Because they mentioned that Sephiroth was born of a woman who's, when, when he was injected with Genova cells in the womb, everyone else who's had it, it's like, okay, they took them as an adult, they injected them with cells, and then bathed them in Mako, and that had some uh, effect on their physiology. Sephiroth developed as a fetus with Genova cells inside of him, which is why he's so much more powerful than anyone else with that procedure. Jeez, yeah, Vincent's yeah. got a really strange tie to Sephiroth. Yeah, and Vincent was one of the Turks who was in love with his mother, who was a scientist who was more interested in the, the science of this and seeing what could be produced than anything else. So she, she had a child with Hojo. And then they injected it with Genova cells to see what would happen. Because however, however much this might just be, we d we don't know Lucretia. Yeah. We just know that she's a scientist, and she wanted to see you know how this experiment might turn out. But we know Hojo, and we know that guy's fucking crazy. Yeah. What did they do to him there? Like, why did he wake up and he's like, I think, Rargh. I I think I think. Vincent may have been the first, um, the first experiment, mm. the first adult to be experimented upon by Hojo with Genova cells. And similar to all those pods that apparently were in the Nibelheim reactor, and we saw the one split open, and there was a monster inside of it, because uh, Vincent's limit breaks transform him into various monsters. Yeah. And I, I, I think what happened there is that uh, Hojo used him as basically experiment zero just to see what would happen yeah like you he, like he just went way too hard to find out what would happen if you fucked around with the human body in Genova cells and ended up making Vincent into what he is now there's a fun moment in crisis core where you can find Vincent's coffin and he it, Zach opens it up and he's like Ugh, and then <laughs> kind of like puts the lid back <laughs> like, I'll just let that guy stay asleep <laughs> yeah don't fuck with him. Yeah. It would be nice if there was more backstory to Vincent and Lucrecia and all that. Because this is a weird spot to find her. Yeah, like why? What is she doing here? Why does this place exist? It, it You don't need to go into that detail, but I, I think a bit more would be nice in that sense. Because I, I do appreciate when a story leaves, leaves you stuff that you can just interpret you know, the way Dark Souls does. Uh, but there's not quite enough there. Just a bit more. Yeah, just a little, it's just a bit more. Like, it could have... She could have been, like, vanished in a bright light and been like, she's yeah. not here anymore. Yeah. Like, and it would have... You know, it's like, mm -hmm. why? What? Like, it made such a little sense that she's just living there? Oh, because... Yeah. Well... Because she can't die, but mm -hmm. still... It, it, it would have been better if you found her, like, in maybe some, like, uh, village somewhere. Yeah. That would, yeah, that would make a bit more sense. It, it, we're just doing like side story, side story stuff now, which is now available to us. Before we go do the thrust of the the main quest, because we're on the home stretch of that. I thought that guy was like zombie or something, but he's just yeah, no, 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 he's carrying, carrying an invisible tray because yeah. they couldn't model a tray. I I love this part. Um, I love this part mostly because of a memory I have associated with it. Where when I was in Afghanistan, I. I finally played through Crisis Core while I was in Afghanistan. Like, I'd bought it before that, but didn't quite find the time for it. 
But then when I was deployed, I was like, fuck it, what else am I going to do? But I borrowed a friend's copy because I forgot mine. And as I was playing it, he's like, so what do you think of it? I'm like, oh, it's really good, but it's kind of odd playing because, you know, you know what's going to happen to Zach the whole time. And he looked mm. at me, he's like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, Zach's going to die. Like, what? Like, he hadn't beaten it yet. I didn't realize I was spoiling anything uh... for him. I'm like, yeah, you didn't. Didn't you see that cutscene in Seven? It's like, no, what are you talking about? And I told him about this whole bit. I'm like, you go back to Nibelheim in Disc 2 after Cloud gets better. You go down into the basement of uh, the Shinra Mansion and you get this whole bonus cutscene where you see Zack and Cloud break out and then Zack gets fucking shotgunned. Yeah. A whole bunch. And he's just... I've never seen someone look so dumb. Like, he loves Final Fantasy Seven, right? Yeah. Probably as much as I do. It's like... it. It's that feeling of thinking you know everything about something then realizing there's something to it you never knew. Like, his mind was blown I like, in that moment. This is just like... Look at that cartoon I background. Know. Like, these are just... <laughs> it's the, the same what are they Mesa. Call, what is that? There's this, there's a, that's a real place in the in our oh, world. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. can't like, remember. It's like the devil's, like, the toenail or something I stupid feel, like that. But I feel like they're using a combination of stuff out of, like, the American Midwest... Like Arizona and Nevada, as well as that one rock yeah. in Australia. Like what are these? How far away are those closer ones supposed to be? Like <laughs> I think they're, they're supposed to be on the side of the road. They're, they're huge, though. No, like you can tell, they're not little. That's ridiculous. Like they're slightly different, but it's mm. like Mesa dot JPEG underscore so one, sharp, Mesa dot yeah. JPEG underscore two. Oh uh, fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it, I wonder how many players never found this cutscene. Because you would really never go back to the Shinra Mansion. You might think to go back and explore because, oh, you heard about Vincent or something, or just for funsies, but there's there's nothing sending you back here. And so I imagine they, they felt free to cut a few corners here <laughs> or there. Also, I'm surprised at how that truck is just a truck. Yeah. I appreciate that. All, that guy doesn't seem to be steering in nope. the front. But I do under I do appreciate that this truck is just an truck, and not some. Well, it might be a dumb tricycle. It's a bump, and Zach just goes flying yeah. out because he's doing squats like a dummy. <laughs> the way Cloud does, because he thinks that's just what you do. Also, Zach's suit is a little bit different from Cloud's. I think Cloud's is supposed to be like an older suit or something mm -hmm. that he just found lying around. Because Zach's is a bit more of a deeper purple. Yeah. Can I tell you I yeah. can't hear anything, but I can hear you when you refer to me as Pops. <laughs> yeah, so Cloud was never one to be very confident in himself or to have much mental fortitude. So spending four years in that tank left him a little fucked up. <laughs> and right now he's just watching Zack and listening to him and not really able to respond, but still absorbing it. What was there like a a message written in the tank? Yeah, I I, I believe I I believe I got that on yeah, my camera what was as well. It? it was like um the same when they were gonna break out. Yeah, and... like they they slowly carved messages into their tank with their fingernail, and one said like, "Let's break out of here," and the other said like, "Feeding time. That's when we'll do it." And that's what we saw right there. Is like I brought them food, and as soon as he opened the tank, Zach knocked them out. Yeah, Zach's suit is a darker purple yeah because he, he said like put this on like it smells it smells or musty yeah. yeah like it's just an old suit liner like it hit like whatever cloud is wearing went through the wash a few hundred times yikes the only part of crisis core i didn't really like is that this moment was too drawn out like zach gets shot all to hell and then he does the anime thing where even though he should be dead he gets to have some final words yeah. <laughs> And then finally die. And they don't kill Cloud because he's too pathetic. They're like, well... He's so pathetic in this moment that they're just, I'll <laughs> leave him. The wolves will take him. Basically, yeah. Could you imagine having so much time to scratch messages into the yeah. glass of a mm -hmm. tank with your fingernail because that's all you have is time floating in a yeah. tank? fuck. See, I, I like this moment because it's just a gut punch. Zack is just dead. Yeah. He just dies, and Cloud just has to handle that. But in Crisis Core, they do they do ruin it a little bit because, like I said, it gets drawn out, and Zack gets to have last words with Cloud. 
and which he didn't get. Yeah. He didn't get that. He just, just gets murdered. Yeah, yeah, just blap. And Eris is right there. Let's see. You did. I guess maybe I didn't, but yeah, okay, apparently I didn't catch it on camera, but yeah, you, uh, you click on their tanks, and one, I think Cloud Scratch, like, let's get out of here, and Zack is like, we'll do it at lunch. <laughs> after tacos. Yeah, basically, everything after tacos. This isn't story bit, I just, I, I love this little side adventure you have to, you have to do to get a specific piece of materia. I remember that lady who was running around all frantic and she had that chocobo with her? Yeah, yeah. She's still here, right? I loved figuring this out as a kid. It was so fun. You, you talk to the white chocobo, and he's all friendly, and Cloud, because he's better, is willing to just have fun with the chocobo. He's like, oh, who are you, little buddy? Yeah, if you have spe if you have a specific type of greens on you, which at this point you would probably be breeding chocobos, and so you might just have a stock of all of them anyway, uh, you feed it to it, and it gets um, excited, and then you have to scratch it in a specific spot. It has a lot of spots. If you scratch a panda's ear, it gives you a unique piece of materia. Which you can't find anywhere else. Which, dummy, that's what unique means. Uh, it gives you... It organized everything. The contained materia, which has huh. freeze, break, tornado, and then flare, the old Final Fantasy staple. Ooh. And you talk... I don't remember who you talked to. I think it might actually be the little girl in the Chocobo stables. But someone you talk to is like, hey, some chocobos like be scratched behind the ear. Just that little bit. Yeah, just that That's little awesome. bit somewhere. I don't think anything gives you a hint about the particular greens that you need. I think they're just relying on the idea that you would have at least one of each green just because you are breeding chocobos at this point. And you just feed them all of the greens until yeah. it goes work. Until, until it stops having an effect. <laughs> like, there's a more efficient way to feed the chocobos, but fuck it. Master a couple of all materia, then just buy a stock of 99 of them. And cram those greens down their gullets. Work, work. <laughs> I'm too full. Keep, Keep eating the greens Keep until you're big and strong. Until your liver gets big and delicious. Like your mother's sister daughter. This is the weird machine that you have to come to, which, again, I've never come to this thing without that key before, so I don't know what actually happens if you don't have it. I imagine he's just like, oh, this thing doesn't work. Gotta find a key somewhere, and then maybe, maybe Bugenhagen knows it, or maybe you just talk to somebody, and they're like, oh, we found something somewhere. But now he's explaining what Holy actually is. Which, this is something else I love that Final Fantasy does, and they're starting to do it now, where they're taking spells that had been in the game mm -hmm. since the beginning, or nearly since the beginning, and they're giving them narrative significance. That's cool. A like, holy and meteor are spells you have in certain Final Fantasies, mm -hmm. but other times you don't access them, or they have story significance. Like here, holy and meteor are the ultimate white and black magics, which usually that's what they are anyway, but here that means something special. Yeah. It's like they're spells of such magnitude that you don't just cast them. You cast Meteor, and then it hangs out in the sky for a few weeks before it destroys <laughs> the world. Because there's actually so many Meteor from, like, Meteor's, yeah. Meteor's an entity in space. And then uh. when you cast it, you're basically letting it know where a planet is that it can fuck up. And it's like, alright, I can make it over there in a few days. Yeah. It, whereas Holy is the inverse of that. It's native to this world, and it's a spell of such magnitude that it just wipes out anything bad for the planet. <laughs> Tech, you people aren't looking too good. Yeah, but, exactly. Like th this game, th I'll talk about more when we get there. But this game ends on a um, ambiguous note. This game might end with the extinction of the human race, and the post-credit scene scene would seem to imply that because you see Midgar all overgrown. But I think that's mostly just Midgar got abandoned because yeah. it was all fucked up. I mean, gr granted, they retconned it later so that people didn't die. Mm. But yeah, they after this they go they go to activate holy knowing full well that it might wipe out humanity because yeah. humanity is dangerous for the world you can take this like will it destroy us i don't know fuck it but there's a there's a fatal there's a fatalistic pragmatism to their fight with sephiroth that i love which again i'll talk about more when we get there in like an episode or two so this is a small hint that it gives you. It's like key in the music box. Someone apparently got here earlier and wrote, managed to translate a few words. Huh. 
of this ancient uh, Cetra script. That's the key? Is That's it? the key, yeah. And that's the music box. I Apparently. Guess. There we go, like a glove, kind of. Like a six-fingered glove. Like a big spiky stick yeah. in a weird crystal hole. People pop up. It's kind of a beep boop bop boop moment. But no, it summons all this water, which just acts as like a, a holographic projection <laughs> projection screen. <laughs> oh, good thing you moved back, Cloud. You've been <laughs> all wet. Well, it looks like you gotta get all wet anyway. Haha, <laughs> joke's on you, Cloud. You're gonna have to redo your hair when you get back to the high one. It takes a lot of time and a lot of hairspray. <laughs> A lot of got to be glued. So Bugenhagen explained the holy materia and how it would could destroy a meteor, but then like, oh, but Eris had it. And we saw it get lost. So now we're boned. <laughs> Watch this death again. Yeah, but now the screen is showing them this whole moment for a reason. swimming, I guess. Not quite, fortunately. Because they just realized that Eris actually managed to cast it. Ah. Oh. She, she prayed and she mm. cast it, but something's blocking it. Something's preventing it from actually manifesting and doing its job. Which is going to Sephiroth at the center of the planet. I was going to say, now they have their hope back, but Cloud beat me to it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ars. I was too busy being a big old dummy. He was too busy being a big old dummy. Maybe if he just hadn't been embarrassed. <laughs> if he just hadn't been embarrassed to see Tifa again. <laughs> That's we. Unless things get too hairy. Then it's definitely I, but you. <laughs> but I will be getting a sandwich over there. Mm. <laughs> He's just sitting on a rock like... Mm, mouthful sandwich giving a thumbs up to Cloud as Cloud's <laughs> getting his ass beat. Cloud is fighting Sephiroth single handedly. In terms of. I've mentioned this multiple times because it keeps coming up. In terms of uh, story distribution throughout the two discs, it really hit me this time how, how staggered that is toward disc one in terms of story content. And just looking at the number of videos that we have, it was like, I think up to 22 or 26, we were still on disc one. Yeah. And then we got to disc two, and the remaining 10 or 14 videos encompass the entirety of disc two and disc <laughs> three. Because then you get to disc three, and it's like, hey, go to the Northern Crater, fight Sephiroth. That's it. Mm. They dedicated all that disc space to the final FMVs. And a couple of side quests only appear on disc 3, obviously, but in terms of just story content, that's all it is. It just fights Sephiroth. How did you move it? How? <laughs> Don't worry about that, though. Yeah, there was a nice moment when we were entering Junon again where it just stops at a spot where normally you would see the cannon and the cloud's like, 
Suddenly feel like it's missing? <laughs> huh. Where is that? Because we're on strike! Yeah, I think it's way too big to move. Like, the, the only way this thing could be moved is if it was built with its own uh, method of locomotion. Yeah. Like those gigantic uh, earth carvers that are like the size of <laughs> yeah. skyscrapers and then have treads the size of football fields. That's, those are crazy. That sometimes you just see slowly crawling across the country. Like the technological apocalypse has already happened and this thing is the harvester. You see large semis like carrying parts of this machine. <laughs> yeah. Just and parts. A couple of bolts. They had to build a machine just to screw in the bolts. <laughs> There's Reeve. Somehow he's also controlling Kate Sith right now? It's very confusing how he does anything with us. It's like I got him on autopilot right now. How does that work, Reeve? I wish Reeve was not looking so good. Like, I wish he looked yeah. like he just crawled out of the basement mm -hmm. from too many <laughs> hours spent in front of the computer. Yeah. In this ultimate VR simulator. I hate these two. This new weapon would be called the Sister Ray, even though that was already scrawled onto the side when we first came there. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 